Good afternoon from Point Orlando. We're here today, as you guys can see behind me, there is a friend's pop-up where you get to visit Monica's apartment and a That 70s Show pop-up where you get to visit Eric's basement. And that's what we're going to visit today. It's put on by Fourth Wall Set Design. It's actually very easy to find. The parking garage is right there. Magiano's is right around the corner. And this is where we're going. So we just parked right there and walked right across the street. And now it does say you can walk in or book online, but I did look online and it says that they do not have any more openings until August 15th. So you definitely can't reserve a spot until August 15th. Let's see if we can go inside. All right, so we are inside. And just to give you guys a little bit of an idea of price, it's $15 per person. And that gets you 10 minutes in each set. And there's two sets. There's Monica's apartment, which is right behind that door right there. And then Eric's basement from that 70s show. So we're gonna start out in Monica's apartment. Let's head inside. So everything is true to the show. Look at that. We are inside of Monica's apartment. Look, there's the door. Like if you look through this peephole right here, you'd be looking at Joey and Chandler's apartment across the way. And there's the picture frame around it. And the little, the intercom. All of these random posters. And look, if you look real carefully, there they are. There's all the friends in this picture frame. And they said that they had to pause the show and try to find each individual little Easter egg throughout the entire thing. So all of these, all these little props that you're seeing are true to the show. Like all these plates up on the wall, all these different food items, the KitchenAid mixer, Mr. Coffee, a GE toaster. Look at that, you can look out. Wonder who's wonder who's in that window over there. Wow. Ooh. Can you open up the refrigerator? Oh no, it's it's closed. Okay, they don't want you to open up the refrigerator. But look at that. Everything is true to the show. You could be sitting here with Joey's grandma watching his premiere on television and then try to distract her because he got cut in an old Sony cordless telephone with an answering machine oh, sex in the city volume three from blockbuster video yeah sitting here oh is this tv guide addressed to chandler bong it is mrs chandler bong brilliant that's ross's kid right but like also isn't that the kid from the sweet life with zach and cody and riverdale at this point oh huh. It's like a nice little throwback to them in the 80s. So that's that's the bathroom, right? And then this is Monica's room. And this is Rachel's room. And then there's the balcony. Oh, I wonder if we can if we can go out on the balcony. Let's see here. Oh, we're going out on the balcony now. We're gonna be looking for the for the ugly naked guy across the way over there. I guess Ross lives across the way too. I wonder if we can see into Ross's apartment. We're looking back in and it's just true to the show too there's only only three walls in the show you never see that wall over there let's see what kind of other picture frames we got here oh there's chandler and monica getting married there's monica and rachel back from the 80s A nice birthday party i wonder if phoebe provided the ice and cups for this birthday party there's the gellers oh yeah Chandler and Ross in their 80s attire. And then Phoebe, she's probably singing Smelly Cat. Oh, wow, look at these paintings. That one's kind of creepy. Oh, so this little beauty right here is the Geller Cup, which they get when they play touch football every year as part of the Geller Bowl. And you can see in 78, Ross won. In 79, Monica won. In 80, Ross won. In 81, Monica won. 82, Monica won. 83, Ross won. It's quite the competition they have going there. This is neat. How much do you think this apartment would cost in the, like, in New York? We know it was rent controlled because this was Monica's grandmother's apartment. But this, this is huge. For a New York apartment? This thing's gigantic. How much would it have cost? This is actually really neat because you can get like an idea of the scale of everything. Huh. Oh, 
Oh yeah, this is from when they switched apartments when Joey and Chandler were living in this apartment right here. Jen gave me the lowdown on this game. So apparently what happens is Joey knows that Monica is wearing granny panties because it is her laundry day. And Joey's like, I know you better than you know you. And so Ross makes up this game and they bet the apartment on it. So if the guys win, they get to live in this apartment and the girls have to move across the hall. So the question that they got wrong was, every week the TV guide comes to Chandler and Joey's apartment. What name appears on the address label? Chandler Bong. And that was the episode where Joey and Chandler got to live in this apartment. Definitely strange, you feel like you could be in here and like Chandler could come through that door at any moment or Ross or Rachel or any of the friends and they'd be like arguing over a trifle over here. Huh. Well, that is neat. So this is Monica's apartment. Like I said, there's two different sets here. So the next set is just around the corner over here. And that is Eric Foreman's basement from that 70s show. Look at that. There's the round table right there. That's where this the iconic shot took place, where they would be looking at each of the characters and they'd all be doing their monologues. Well, that one, would, there would be a different shot behind there, but... So, like, this is where they would come in and all the gang would be sitting over here on the couch. There's a, there's a Playboy on the, on the couch right there. Oh, look at this. Some 8-tracks. I wonder if we got some, I got a Journey 8-track, a Boston 8-track, a record player, an 8-track player. Fun fact, did you know that the show only took place over four years? And you can tell what year that episode is taking place in by the license plate at the end of the opening credits, because it'll say down in the bottom corner, like what year it is, 1977, 1975, something like that. I did not know that there was a Plinko machine in the background of that 70s show. Nice ELO poster. Also, it's the stupid helmet. Right? Anytime anybody in the show is going to do something stupid, they had to put on the stupid helmet. Just look at the detail here. All this stuff that was in the background. Look at this vintage Yahtzee game. Wow. And then you would run upstairs to go to the rest of Eric's house. And then the washing machines, the nice green Whirlpool washing machines. Oh, there's Eric Foreman's badge from Fatso Burger. Well, this is kind of a very nice lamp made out of popsicle sticks. This is really neat. Oh. It's the owner's manual for a Vista Cruiser. Wow. Oh, and Star Wars? For Star Wars on the cover of Rolling Stones and O.J. Simpson? The hidden... Lord of the Hidden Jungle, Kazar. Huh. Very interesting. This is neat. There's so much detail in both of these sets. This one's actually a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be for that 70s show basement. Like, I, I, like looking at it now, it seems like that's the way that it would be. People coming in from the outside and people sitting on the couch, people over there at the washing machines. It just seems like that's, it would be smaller. But now that I'm in it, yeah, this is how big it was. Also, if you're just looking at this, this was the basement right here. And they have tripods set up so that you can do the selfie timer on your phone because everything is, because you guys know these are uncertain times, they are sanitizing everything in between each guest so that they don't have to hold your phone and take photos for you. They have the little selfie stand so that you can get selfies of yourself in any location around these sets. So there you have it. That was our trip into the Friends pop-up at Point Orlando. We're gonna kind of walk around a little bit about Point Orlando some more. But I did want to say real quick, thank you to Fourth Wall Sets for inviting us out. We got us in here before they open and everything, just so we could show it to you guys. They're not doing walk-ins currently. You do have to have a reservation because they need enough time to clean the entire set in between guests. 
And I did want to say that they have sold all of their tickets through August 15th. So if you're buying a ticket online, you're buying a ticket for after August 15th. They did say that if you wanted to, you could give them a call maybe like a day before your planned visit and they might be able to squeeze you in maybe with a cancellation or something like that. So they did say that they are working on doing other sets other than Friends and that 70s show because they do have enough room in the space for another set altogether. So look for some changes in the future. It sounds like they're looking to expand because it seems like it's a very popular thing. They also said that they like the idea of having maybe like three different doors that you could choose and have like a nice quick experience before your dinner. Like say you check into Maggiano's and they're like, oh, we got like a 40 minute wait. You could pop over to this pop-up, spend 10 minutes in the friends area and 10 minutes in that 70s show. And then you've already spent 20 minutes of your wait time, come back to Maggiano's and there, your table's probably ready at this point. So Point Orlando is an interesting place right now because there's not very much open because of the coronavirus. So there are three restaurants open. There's Maggiano's, there's the pub, and then there's Capitol Grill, and that's it. They're still working on this Brazilian steakhouse. They're still building it. Uh, and then most of the other stores are closed. There's a big theater that's closed. All the other restaurants are closed. There's uh, like an entertainment area that's closed. Let's go back there and have a look around. Yeah, here's an example right here. This isn't goodbye, it's see you later. They're temporarily closing this location beginning March 18th. They've been closed since March 18th. We got the Capitol Grill that is open. Oh look, there's the higher Regency. You guys remember when I repelled off that building? We'll put a link to that in the description down below. Looks like they do curbside pickup over here for the Capitol Grill. And I think the pub is open over here, which is like a typical British pub. There's also a lot of construction still going on around this entire facility. Let's see. Let's see if there's anything else that we can see that's still open. Probably serving the best fish and chips in the US. Says who? But yeah, that's it. Cuba Libre is closed still. Let's see if let's see what their sign says. Oh, closed until we get the all clear. Wow. This is so interesting to just walk around this area. I wonder if they're still on plan for late 2020 to reopen the redevelopment of Point Orlando. There's a huge, huge movie theater back here that has been closed since March. Let's see if there's a sign outside of Main Event Entertainment. It's like a giant like bar, bowling alley, arcade. Oh yeah, here's the sign. It says temporary closures for COVID-19. Beginning Tuesday, March 17th is when they closed. And it's now June 15th. I have to admit, I know that when we came here before, there weren't that many people here but it just seems like this is not good. Like a lot of these restaurants have been closed since March. Looks like Taverna Opa is still open. They've got their door open. But when we came here last time, there weren't that many people here, but they said that the majority of their business happens on weekends. But a lot of these places have just been closed. This used to be a place called Adobe Gila's. And it looks like it's gonna be called Brother Jimmy's Barbecue. Coming soon. Sounds good. I mean, barbecue is always good. Adobe Gila's was a Orlando staple for a very, very long time though. I came over to the theater. This was the only 4DX theater in town too. Wanted to see if they had any signs up, maybe that give the date that they closed. See here, Regal Cinema, temporarily closed. Oh, I didn't say when they actually closed. I'm assuming towards the middle of March. Wow. I wonder if we can see some of the movies that were playing when this closed down. Wonder Woman? No, Mulan was supposed to be coming out, but it never actually came out. That's about all that I can see. The Way Back? Huh, there it is. A poster, one for Sonic the Hedgehog, and two, that poster in the very back back there is for Trolls World Tour. Never actually came out in theaters it was just released on demand. It is pretty interesting because it does sort of feel like we're in an abandoned place, but it's not. There are restaurants that are open here. The Friends pop-up is open. Things are open, but there's just nobody here. I've seen maybe like two or three other people here while I've been here. And like the escalator's still running. Oh, this is so strange. Hollister is open. I have on a sale, 50% off. And that's something I didn't expect to see. There's a Tommy Hilfiger clearance store up here and people are waiting for them to open. I'm assuming they're probably gonna open at three. It's almost three right now. People are waiting in line. Two, like not it's like two, two groups of people are waiting in line, but still people are waiting in line for the Tommy Hilfiger clearance store to open. Here's something that you kind of have to wonder. When do you think Monkey Joe's will open back up? 
because this is an entirely interactive experience. Oh, I think it is open. Interesting. So I guess they're just saying like, follow the CDC recommendations and don't sue us if you get COVID-19 while you're inside of Monkey Joe's. And those of you guys that don't know what Monkey Joe's is, it is like an indoor playground for kids. It, a lot of interactive, a lot of touch areas. It doesn't seem like a good place to go during a pandemic to me, but I don't know. Maybe they're cleaning a lot in there. Who knows? But I don't think I would go to Monkey Joe's. Just saying. So there you have it. That was our trip out to Point Orlando to go to the Friends and 970 Show pop-up presented by Fourth Wall Sets. It was great. It was really interesting seeing how much detail went into Monica's apartment, seeing like the, the board where the game, where they switched the apartments, and then going into Eric's basement and seeing all of that stuff that's going on in there, like the, the eight tracks, the stupid helmet, the washer and dryer, and then the circle table in the center where they did that iconic monologue with all of the characters spinning the camera around to show each one of them talking about something. So, I don't know, I had a really good time. I do highly suggest you guys book a time to come out and check this out. It's neat. It is like, like I said, a nice quick experience where you get to hang out in the friend's apartment, take photos. Great for Instagram. So all in all, it was a great day. And with that being said, we are off. We'll see you guys tomorrow. And now it's time to help. And today's organization that we wanted to shine a spotlight on is the Equal Justice Initiative. And they have been fighting racial and economic injustice in the prison system for 30 years and they provide assistance to advocates and policymakers to prevent unfair incrimination. So take a look in the description down below, check, click on the link, donate if you can. If you can't, just going to the website and learning about it and sharing with your friends and family a little bit more about this organization really helps out. Talk about it and thank you guys for watching this video.